In this report, we mark the medical and social milestones over the past 40 years, from when an HIV diagnosis was a death sentence, to today, when treatment means it's undetectable and untransmittable. We also look ahead to what's required to reach zero new cases in England over the next decade. This now iconic government tombstone advert to raise awareness of AIDS in 1986 shocked viewers and sparked claims of scaremongering, while the media referred to AIDS as the gay plague and patients were wrongly blamed for having contracted HIV, leaving many too ashamed to tell loved ones they were dying. In the 1980s and 1990s, it was pretty grim. Um, you know, I used to go and visit friends in a uh, hospital ward to you know, see these young, vibrant men, mainly, um, who were really sort of wasting before your very eyes was something that was absolutely awful. Terence Higgins Trust was set up in 1982, named after Terry Higgins, who died aged 37. The charity has always had activism at its heart, fighting against discrimination. People did burn their children's beds. Um, there were people who were locked up because of they um, under Communicable Diseases Act, um, and uh, the, it was staff from the Terence Higgins Trust with really amazing pro bono lawyers that went and got people released. It took the handshake of an ungloved Princess Diana in 1987 to challenge the once common but incorrect belief that HIV or AIDS could be transmitted by touch. I think honestly it was transformational to see a member of the royal family, to see perhaps the highest profile member of the royal family at that stage shake hands with someone really made the difference of people saying, oh my God, if she's doing that, it must be OK. HIV diagnosis used to be a death sentence. Today's treatments can involve taking just one pill a day. There is now no reason why anyone with HIV should not live a full life. The transformation of HIV care over the last 40 years is nothing short of a modern medical miracle. By taking HIV treatment, the goal of treatment is for the virus to become undetectable. We check that on a blood test, but undetectable in the blood means undetectable in most bits of the body, including sexual fluids. So by having an undetectable viral load, if you have sex with somebody who's HIV negative, you can't pass the virus on to them. We want to try and end AIDS by 2030. It is doable. We have the medicines. We have the wherewithal. We just need to get people to get tested. We need Elton John is one of the most famous faces, raising over $515 million for HIV AIDS programs around the world through his AIDS Foundation, helping to reach vulnerable groups globally. It has got an awful lot better in the UK in so many ways, treatment and attitudes and so on. But when you look at the rest of the world, and we work in 23 countries, there's huge variations about the extent to which the stigma and discrimination, but also vulnerabilities. I think it's really important that we understand the global context. I mean, it's still uh, shocking that almost a million people a year are dying of an AIDS-related illness, and there's absolutely no need for people to die anymore. HIV is still with us. In the UK, around 80 people a week are still newly diagnosed with HIV. The government's goal is to cut new cases to zero by 2030. It's well within our grasps in this country to end new HIV transmissions by 2030. That's a global target, but I think the UK could be the first country to get there. We have all of the tools in the toolbox to make that happen. Right now, here in the UK, there are 6,600 undiagnosed people living with HIV. The aim is for more testing. What we need is for all healthcare professionals, including emergency departments and GPs, to feel confident to offer an HIV test. Really, anyone at risk of HIV should have a test if they're having blood taken. The companies who developed effective COVID vaccines are shifting their attention to HIV but it's the treatments that give the greatest hope. In the pipeline, there are tablets you can take every month. There are injections every six months and implants that could be given as little as every year. Terence Higgins Trust continues to fight to end the stigma and encourage people to get tested. For Ian, who was diagnosed with HIV in 1996, his work is in memory of four friends, John, Mark, Stuart and Michael who had their lives cut short by AIDS. I think they'd be astonished by the progress 
that have been made. And I know that Terry Higgins would have been absolutely astonished. And to think that his name lived on in what is an incredible and amazing charity.